Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today, we'll talk about Rule 4 of the responsibilities of the investigator according to good clinical practice. More after the break. Rule 4. Ensure timely and efficient safety reporting. GCP distinguishes between four essential safety-related events. The first one is the adverse drug reaction. This applies in the pre-approval clinical phase of a new medicinal product or its new usages, particularly as the therapeutic dose may not be established. All noxious and unintended responses to a medicinal product related to any dose should be considered adverse drug reactions. The phrase responses to a medicinal product means that a causal relationship between a medicinal product and an adverse event is at least a reasonable possibility. The relationship cannot be ruled out. An unexpected adverse drug reaction is an adverse reaction, the nature or severity of which is not consistent with the applicable product information of the present product. Information in this context can be found, for example, in the investigator's brochure for an unapproved investigational medicinal product or the package insert and summary of product characteristics for an approved product. This implies that if a certain expected adverse drug reaction, such as a slight headache or light nausea occur more intensely, thus becoming a severe headache or severe nausea, then this must be regarded as an unexpected adverse drug reaction. An adverse event is not a drug reaction because causality is no consideration. Consequently, each medical adverse event is an adverse event according to good clinical practice, regardless of whether in your opinion, it is related to the investigational medication or not. An adverse event must always be recorded this provision is intended to eliminate doubt about whether a certain event deserves recording or not. Often unrelated events, considered collectively, ultimately indicate adverse reactions. An example, in a multi-centered dose-finding study, an oral antidiabetic drug has been tested. In that study, one patient of a certain site had a bike accident in road traffic which was considered as unrelated to the study medication by the investigators. Nevertheless, this incident was recorded as an adverse event. A patient of another site collapsed when getting out of the car. At another site, a patient fainted for no apparent reason. The whole data finally indicated that the patients in whom the dosage exceeded a certain amount became hypoglycemic without exception. The consequences of hypoglycemia were the recorded accidents. This process makes clear the importance of recording all adverse events, because even for the affected patients themselves, a causal connection between the accidents and the investigational medication was not apparent. It is thus clear that although you are, of course, supposed to assess causality, you must document each adverse event independently of whether a causal connection is discernible or not provided that the investigator is able to make a diagnosis. The investigator should record the diagnosis as an individual adverse event. In the case of several symptoms without any ascertainable connection, each symptom needs to be recorded as an individual adverse event, respectively. An example, a patient suffers from diarrhea and nausea and you diagnose abdominal flu. In that case, the stomach flu would be the only adverse event. If, however, the investigator is not sure whether the stomach flu is actually the cause of the symptoms, diarrhea and nausea must be recorded as individual adverse events, respectively. However, the investigator has to avoid recording both diagnosis and individual symptoms as adverse events. Enhanced adverse events are serious adverse events. An adverse event becomes a serious adverse event whenever one of the five criteria listed here is fulfilled. If the event leads to death, if the event is life-threatening, if the event requires hospitalization or prolongation of existing hospitalization, if it results in persistent or significant damage, or if it is a congenital anomaly or birth defect, a six-point not listed in good clinical practice 
is however required by most of the sponsors. Thereby the sponsors often define precisely what should be classified as serious adverse event, such as any type of cancer, an HIV infection, or, very often in vaccination studies, vaccine failure. All serious adverse events must be reported within 24 hours after the investigator became aware of the serious adverse event. So much about the Rule 4 for investigators. We will look into each of the other 12 rules in future videos, so stay tuned. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time.